Hi everyone, I'm Jim from Southern Counties Baptist Association. Welcome back to the Fuelcast. In the previous videos, I shared about my journey through burnout and some of the lessons I've been learning about the gift of rest, behind which is this idea of Sabbath built into the created order. In this final video, I'd like to talk about the goal of all of this, the outcome, which is contentment. In 1 Timothy 6 verse 6, St Paul says to his young apprentice, godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, we cannot take anything out of this world. But if we have food and clothing, we should be content with that. And yet, especially in this day and age, true contentment is one of life's rarest virtues. To be able to sit in your chair and want for nothing. And I'm discovering that understanding rest and Sabbath is the key to understanding contentment because it helps us to stop striving to always have what we want, the perfect family, the perfect job, house. It teaches us instead not to have what we want, but to want what we already have. As Jesus himself puts it in Luke 12, he says, do not worry about your life. Gosh, imagine living out those six words, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or your body, what you will wear, for life is far more than food and the body more than clothes. What an antidote to the world's values. You see, contentment transforms our whole mindset, makes us look for things to be grateful for, rather than always focusing on what we don't have. In fact, it helps us to love people and use things rather than loving things and using people. So this week I challenge you, as I challenge myself, to find one thing each day to be thankful for. See if it doesn't transform your mindset. I was reading about a pastor who was going around the supermarket with his little son on a Saturday morning. He was so focused on getting the shopping, he had a busy Sunday ahead of him. And all the way around the supermarket, the son was saying, Dad, Dad, and he just ignored his son. He was so focused on the shopping. And all the way around, Dad, Dad, just ignored him. Then the son had an idea. He, he took a step back and lowered his voice and he said, Pastor, his dad swung around to attention. It's actually a true story and the man who tells it says that happened 15 years ago and now my son doesn't talk to me. Ouch. Because the reality, if we're honest, is that what others think about us is so often more important than what God thinks. Can we be honest enough to admit that? That what other people think about us is more important than what God thinks sometimes? Contentment is about learning to be at peace with who I am and who I'm not. It's learning that God's approval is enough. And so my prayer these days is a very simple one and it just goes like this, Lord, may what's most important to you become what's most important to me. And if there's anything that's lower down on your agenda, would it drop down on mine too? Guys, I realise these are tough questions. I spent 20 years trying to avoid them. I don't want to give the impression that any of this is easy. But if anything in my story has rung alarm bells, can I urge you to do something about it? Have an honest conversation with your loved ones, with your GP, with your church family. Please don't do what I did and wait until you crash, because it's not pretty. My journey to recovery has involved medication that I thank God for, counselling that I thank God for, a lifestyle change that I'm still learning, and maybe just being a little bit kinder to myself, starting to make the choice to see myself as God sees me. I'd love to recommend a couple of books that help me. The first one is called The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry by John Mark Comer. The second one is for leaders, it's called Leading on Empty by Wayne Cordiera. The third one is not a Christian book, it's written by a GP called Dr. Rangan Chatterjee and it's just called The Four Pillar Plan just filled with practical advice on living a balanced life. Feel free to get in touch if you'd like to make contact with me, just go to the Southern Counties Baptist Association website. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much for listening to these little videos. I'll be praying for you 
And I just pray that you would know the peace of God, the rest of God. Would you know that Sabbath rest? Would you know how you're created, that your kind and generous God just longs for you to know his blessing? And may you know the contentment of God's approval. I'd just love to pray a little blessing over you. It's well-known words for many, I guess. I just pray that God will bless you, keep you, make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look kindly on you and give you his peace. Amen. God bless you.